as she's walking through the valley of the shadow of death. She takes a look at her life and realizes there's nothing left. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka Geek XX Chic, and we are back with a brand new and yet final season of Sweet Home. We're on season three. At I'd say long last, but it wasn't too bad. I think we only had six months between the last um, the last season and this one, and this is it, which le leads me to believe that they must have filmed season two and three back to back, which is. Thank goodness. So I'm not gonna lie, I've kind of forgotten a lot of what happened, although I think the main things of the finale to remember is that, what's her name? The the girl who was searching for her brother, I think her name is Unji, something like that. Her brother is back. He was in that giant weird pulsating chrysalis. He was birthed at the end of the season, looking very human. No, not monster-like at all, but we know that that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not a monster. Uh, we also know that we were, we lost uh, the firefighter lady, she, her daughter decided to monsterize her as a parting gift and she was already dying. So it didn't quite take the way it should have. So we see that, um, our lead guy whose name just flew right out of my head, flew her into like one of these huge cracks in the, in the ground. Cause he was like, she's suffering. And I think we still had a handful of people that are at that shelter. We know that the sergeant who is running the place is in the middle of his monsterization and only a few people know about it, and that there is a monster who is there, who the lady who let everybody into the shelter in the first place has been hiding since the beginning, and I believe that it's her former husband, or I guess he's still her husband, but anyway, it's her husband, and she's been keeping that secret the whole time. So a lot of drama happening there at the camp, and this, there's still the daughter that's out there, the firefighter's daughter, who is able to monsterize anybody by just touching them. She's saying she's done with humanity and she's just gonna do whatever she wants now. So that's the main things I remember. And there might've been some other details I forgot, but I'm ready to jump into this season and see what we've got and how we're gonna wrap this whole thing up because I have no idea how you end a story like this. So let's jump into episode one. But just before I do, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. I do reactions to all sorts of really great things here, including shows like this. So if you'd like to continue to watch these shows with me, please go ahead hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell so you can know when I drop new episodes. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. Oh, right, I forgot that this guy's got split personality between his monster and the real guy too. Kyunsu, thank you for the names. They'll all come back, I promise. I'm glad someone said it. I don't really like her. What are you doing now? Whatever it wants, really. I do not like how bossy she is with him. I will never like this coupling, by the way. Don't like her at all. That water looks funky. Mm -mm. That's like my worst nightmare is to be covered in all that. Oh. Hello, you handsome fox. When they're the devil. Yeah, he's like, I need to have fun with you. Glad you lived. Mm. Probably not going to be getting that lucky. Told you. We couldn't get lucky enough to have this sick man taken out. <sighs> He doesn't care about any of these people. <laughs> Y'all are, the only thing this man cares about is himself. You need to be torturing him for fun. Sorry, my friend. This is why you should never trust anyone. Yeah, Yonsuk's done. I'm sorry. Interesting. I mean, I feel like they're done for regardless. Yeah, he doesn't care about them, so. She got no so. They're not gonna let you go, bro. He's gonna choose to die with his men, I think. 
나오는 거야, 새끼야. 나도 똑같아. 이대로 내보내들 나도 다 포기할 것 같아서 그래. That's what a true leader does. Ugh. No, don't touch the pustules. Well, at least you guys didn't go out like G's. That's true. I thought you said y'all you kept your promises. Hmm, monsters lie. 이번에 실망시키지 마. Okay, so she's the one with a soft heart. Oh, it's true, not all the monsters are mean. I mean, I don't think there's any need for them to be topless for this scene, but I appreciate it. <laughs> um, serious business. What if it does? It slipped out for him. Go make yourself useful for once instead of just causing people trouble. Constantly getting that, into trouble that one. You still nursing your broken heart, bro? Get over it. She never liked you. Yeah, she really meant it. She wants you to go. She don't like you. God, not this psychopath. Run! The one likable female character in this, in this show is right now at the bottom of this pit. She's alive. So what is he gonna do? Try to like rescue her human son? Help her get control of her monster? <gasps> ah, her guilt eating her up. It should. It should. <laughs> that CGI baby though. <laughs> In fairness, she did not have a lot of time to process this whole monster baby stuff. Really, like, she didn't even get a full pregnancy. She went from being a couple months to full term in, like, a day. She did screw up quite a bit, for sure, but most people have more time to process. You need to talk to her. Try, for once, rather than yelling at her, calling her a monster and treating her like one. Interesting, okay. If he can learn to do this, then he might be able to do more with other monsters. Oh, ew, okay. Tentacles at the back? Dude, if you're gonna turn that fire on, you need to do it quickly. Your boys are getting tired. This stamina is very, very hot, but it's about to, oh no. Bye, hottie. Damn, you did all that and you can't even save your boy. That sucks. No, it's over for him, bro. Put him out of his misery. Damn, she's a badass. Too bad she's using her powers for evil. Or she's just trying to survive. So are you referring to where the big, I thought the big chrysalis, they just left, but okay, I don't know where they're talking about. Mm. You fed him to the monsters. You're not, you're gonna be exposed, Cal. Know that. Forgot she got blamed. Who helped her? I'm gonna feed you to your father. Shh. Apologizing? Sis. Let it go, your mama don't love you. She love her man. Go where? Why do you, oh mom, please? She has made it very clear to you she does not care about you. Hmm. It's like that. Damn. Damn. You got a kid? Is that who the monster is? Oh my gosh, you really are slow, aren't you, sis? Mm, it was her son. I thought it was her husband. Never mind.
Thank you. So the guy she turned, the one who turned into a monster, ate her son? That's comeuppance. Well, that looks easy to fight. Meanwhile, you got that poor old man passed out on mushrooms in the back. You better hope you don't wake up with a start. Nothing you can do at this point. My guy's either gonna deal with that situation or he's not. And he'll heal from it anyway. Oh, now you're gonna go down? Okay. Mm, that thing's Nyash is not nice. Meanwhile, back in this lady's twisted mind, as she's walking through the valley of the shadow of death, she looks, takes a look at her life and realizes there's nothing left. Did you fall into Shigaraki's mind? Hey, that's the first thing I've ever seen in a movie or a TV show. I actually know to stop, drop, and roll when on fire. Teach the others. And you better not cut yourself down. You'll die from that height, just so you know. He's so heroic. He's like, um, Yunsu, bro, if you could just do this whole healing of her mind a little faster, that'd be spectacular. Come on, keep running to her. This is what it's all about, right? You gotta stop being scared of her, sis. Reconcile it. Your daughter's a monster and it's okay. Look at him. Look at him. Finally. Don't you really want to save your daughter? That's ah, the monster. I get it. Are we back now? Okay. Far good enough. Let's go. Damn. I had a feeling it'd be like that. Hansu was like, anyways, anyways, I was busy. He's gotten better with his aim though. Now he's gonna fly both your asses back up here. Good thing he's strong. Everybody's okay, it's fine. No need to panic, we're good. Everyone's good. Aces, give her a thumbs up. All right, does that mean it's gone or she learned to control it? Guess we'll find out. Cause we know they evolved, so maybe she just learned how to control it. Now, can someone please get her a shirt, a cloth, something? She butt-ass naked in front of two men. Still crying, huh? Okay. But if this actually works, that means Hyun Su's the answer, which means the changeling and all those other ones that are all about pro monster, they're gonna want him gone immediately. Cause if he can reverse all the work that he just, they just did. Ooh, not them playing Billie Eilish. All right, guys. Well, that was episode one. And uh, we kind of picked up exactly where we ended in the second season. A lot of action right off the bat, actually, which I didn't mind. And uh, they kind of caught us up a little bit with things that happened from the previous season in case we didn't remember. But I kind of feel like that was a little bit of a waste of time, but that's okay. In the end, we see that uh, I forgot about the fact that Hyun Su and his monster are kind of sharing a dual mind at the moment. And that the monster side of Hyun Su is kind of a manifestation of all of Hyun Su's frustrations over all the things in his life. Like he's always felt like he was weaker. He always felt like he didn't stand up enough. And we do know he's got a lot of guilt and a lot of rough feelings around the fact that he's the only person to survive when his family did not. So not surprised that there was a little bit of all of that kind of negative energy that's manifested into this monster who he describes as the protector of Hyun Soo when Hyun Soo is either hurt or just not able to mentally deal. So it's a bit of a crutch situation at the moment. We see that, um, what is her name? Is it Eunhyuk? I cannot remember her name right now. But anyway, she's not a fan of this. She wants, you know, Hyun Soo, which as I said, I've, I've never been a big fan of her character. Like I feel like sometimes <laughs> in K-dramas, the writers have a really hard time just writing a strong female character without making her either super bitchy or just kind of like unlikable. 
You know, it's kind of like she's, she's either gotta be the damsel type or if she's tough, she's like insufferable with the exception of Lee Kyung. Lee Kyung was actually to me a really well-written tough girl. And I get that we can't just make everyone like Lee Kyung. You need to make different variations. But I love the fact that the stoner girl called her a brat because that's exactly what she is. Like that girl is such a brat. She's been a brat since season one. She's very entitled. She's very selfish. I just, <sighs> Hyun Soo could do better. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. He could definitely do better than her. And the way she talked to the monster in this condescending way, like, yeah, I want, you know, Hyun Soo as he is. Like, I get that she's saying she doesn't want to deal with the monster, but at the same time, it's kind of like, I wish you'd maybe step back instead of just judging what this monster might mean and just think about more of why the monster manifested itself in the first place. And again, I'm probably putting way too much on her because, you know, she doesn't know Hyun Soo that well, but I'm just saying, I feel like there could be a different approach because I do think she liked the fact that the Hyun Soo she knew was quiet and she could tell him what to do and she could push him around and he really didn't do much to fight back. And I think she likes that. And I don't like that for Hyun Soo, if that makes sense. I don't want him to be a jerk. Like, you know, the monster is definitely a bit of an ass, but I do like that the monster gives him a bit more of a backbone that I think he should have, especially towards people who like blatantly try to use him or disregard his feelings. And in season one, she really did not give a damn about Hyun Soo. And even now, I don't think she really cares about him so much as she cares about what he could mean to finding her brother, if that makes sense. Like she's still not given up on that dream just yet. So anyway, also the fact that what Hyun Soo represents, right? Cause she thinks that if her brother became a monster, then maybe he's still alive and maybe he's like Hyun Soo, which as we saw from the preview trailer, that it looks like he is somewhat like Hyun Soo as well. So, but anyway, yeah, we got to see what's going on with that. And we see that Hyun Soo right now, he wants to try to save Yi Kyung. That was his main concern because uh, like I said, he kind of tossed her to <laughs> that whole last season because she was going berserk and he didn't want her to hurt herself or hurt anybody else. But he's like, I think she's still in there. I think I can fix her or I can find a way to save her and I gotta try, right? So, because again, she didn't ask for this monsterization. This was not a natural monsterization. Her, her daughter pushed that onto her and it wasn't even complete because Hyun Su, technically, sorry, Lee Kyung was already gone. So I get that he went in there and he explained a little bit about whatever his ability is and that he's like, I've seen the monsterization in people before, but he's like, hers is the most extreme case I've ever come across. So he's like, or I haven't gone, sorry, I haven't gone that deep before. I've kind of just seen flashes, which is true. Last season, we just saw him seeing like a few brief images the few times that he did it but this time he actually delved into her mind and was able to see a lot of what she was going through so now that he kind of understood it and now he can actually tap into it at will as opposed to it just coming on by accident he was actually able to get in there and truly see what her trauma was and help her come back to herself right and we see again her her monster unsurprisingly is all around her guilt of dealing with, with her daughter and the way she dealt with her daughter. And I think that was good for us to see as an audience because last season, we did not get very much of them at all until kind of the middle of the season. And even then we did a lot of big time skips and jumps from when she kind of first abandoned the baby with Hyun Soo to when she tried to come back to when things inevitably went wrong. And so it's nice to kind of see more of what she's been internally battling. And it's completely understandable in my opinion, like, how do you even begin to reconcile the fact that your daughter is a monster, a, a new type of monster you've never seen before? You've been up until this point thinking that all monsters are bad. The ones you've seen have tried to hurt you, hurt other people. You don't know if that's what she's gonna be. You know, this pregnancy, like she just, if we look at the timeline of last season, she just found out she was pregnant before things went crazy and then she got captured by the government. And then she finally went back to try to find her man that she found out was probably still alive to only for discover that he was basically tortured to death. And then something about being exposed to him. She went from being, again, remember, only knowing she was pregnant for maybe a few days to being full term in a matter of minutes because of exposure to her husband. So if we think about that, even mentally, that's crazy, right? That alone is enough to drive a person insane because I think there's a very good reason why humans gestate for nine months. You need time to mentally prepare for that stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we need time to mentally and emotionally just like reconcile with the fact that a whole human is coming into this world, uh, coming out of your body, right? So she didn't even have time to really process that. And then she immediately went into labor. So by the time she even realized what happened to her body, her body's like, let's get this thing out. And she had to get it out because that baby was gonna rip itself, it, it was gonna rip its way out, right? That baby was literally clawing at her belly. So she does that, almost dies giving birth, almost literally dies giving birth. And then she gets rescued by her child. I, I, or no, it was, 
was it Hyunsu or the baby? Hyunsu saved her. But then she sees this baby and it's not even human, right? It, the look of her daughter when she first saw her was just, I don't even know how you would even begin to mentally reconcile that, right? She's, first of all, way larger than a newborn, gnawing on her own umbilical cord and look, nothing about her looks, looks human at all. So just so much. Like the point is that I'm trying to make is that Lee Kyung has had a lot to deal with in a very short span of time. And she's done her best to do that while also literally surviving this monster apocalypse. So I don't, I shouldn't say I don't blame her because she still is responsible for her actions, but I get why she was so chaotic and I get why it was very hard for her to figure out what to do about this child now that she knows is biologically hers and also the man that she loved and now lost. But you know, this child is a monster and she doesn't know what that means in this new world. I really think it was nice that in this episode, we got to see more of her internal struggle and the fact that the maternal instinct in her did exist. It very much wanted to love and protect this child, but her logical brain, her fear response, her trauma just wouldn't let her give into that maternal instinct entirely. And it just, unfortunately, she realizes that because she let her fear take the wheel in those first critical few months with her daughter, it severed that relationship, maybe not forever, but for now it's heavily damaged. And so that guilt is really eating away at her because she realized too late that she should have tried harder to be a mom to her. Like maybe the way that would have saved her from giving in to the monster is if she had been more of a mother to her and not treated her like a thing. And that's one thing her daughter obviously picked up on as young as she was. And so anyway, like that we got to see that. And that of course, this whole situation with uh, Hyunsu helped us to see that, but thankfully Hyunsu was able to get to her and let her know that this this fake version of her daughter that she was chasing in her subconscious was really the monsterization, keeping her locked in that state. So he's like, no, like that's not her. Your real daughter still needs you. You need to come back. So he pulled her out of it. Thank goodness in the nick of time, because we see that um, our soldier boy, <laughs> the rejected soldier boy, ended up meeting up with the crazy mushroom girl. And they ended up, of course, bumping into our little brat. And the three of them, thankfully, were kind of necessary because they went to basically help out Hans Hyunsu and Lee Kyung. And they ended up protecting Hyunsu while he kind of did the last of what he needed to do. Although I feel like he, Hyun, well, actually, they actually both would have been fine. Technically, they would have been fine. Hyunsu's pretty hardy. But anyways, it still shows that there are people who are fighting for Hyunsu, which is nice. And so we see that, yes, Mr. Soldier Boy is still not quite over his crush yet, even though, like I said, that girl ain't never gonna like him. Like it's it's very obvious that they're building towards her and Hyunsu being the end game. But you know, you gotta give him his props. At least he doesn't walk away easily. But honestly, I do think those two would be a better combination. Like he knows what a brat she is and he still likes her. But anyhow, so that's now taken care of. We see that everyone walked away alive, thankfully. And we see that it looks like the monsterization is gone, right? Cause typically by the time they transfer into monsters or transform, I should say, into monsters, they can't go back unless they're like, Hyunsu. So the fact that we saw the monsterized side of her disappear, we don't know. I'm not going to until the next episode for certain if that means the monsterization is gone altogether or if it just means now she's like Hyunsu and she'll be able to control it to some degree. So we'll have to see. But if it is a situation where the monsterization is gone because she basically walked away and resisted the demon, so to speak, then like I said, if that's what it means, Hyunsu has become the single most dangerous weapon to monsterization, especially the more advanced monsters. I think some of the more base monsters are probably too far gone, but if he can get to some of the other ones, like that's it, like he could literally reverse their monsterization. And again, we'll have to see if it's permanent or not, but very interesting development where that's concerned. Uh, outside of that, we just had some of the soldiers again. We see that the um, all the little, the test subjects from before they've gotten together, they're torturing the soldiers and basically like having fun with them. But they're saying also outside of the having fun with them, they're trying to, like he said, evoke an emotional response so extreme that if they are candidates for monsterization, it'll manifest itself. So to be, to make a long story short, they're trying to make more of themselves, right? They want to trigger more monster humans, but the more advanced ones like them that can control their monsterization and keep their mind intact and they're not able to do it. So that's why the mad scientist continues to live because he was the one who in the changeling's mind He's the one who helped him discover that he could control his monsterization, but he doesn't know how or what triggered it. So they want to keep the doctor alive now because they know they need help to see if they can continue 
creating more of these people because their whole idea is that they're going to take over, right? They're going to make enough of them so that they can basically make everyone in the world a neo-human as they use, as the term they use, and then wipe out humanity. So yeah, the doctor at this point obviously is going to go along with it because he's just fascinated by the science and it keeps him alive. He's a snake, we know this. But we see that the soldiers were saved. Well, one of them was saved. No, the one who's dangling is still up there, right? Yeah, there's still one dangling at the top. But there is the, which I think he looks like he's in bad shape. But anyways, we see we lost one, the one with a really great body. Mm, such a shame, but he had his whole spleen ripped out. So I don't think he's gonna make it. But at least they're not gonna be eaten by monsters. We see the girl with the spider back took, she's a badass. She's really controlled that monsterization of hers. But anyway, she saved them, which we already know the other people she's rolling with did not want. They wanted her to kill them. So she's got a soft spot. So I feel like she's gonna be a convert for whenever Hyun Su comes around. But for now, She's rolling with the bad crew. We see that the scientist saw that she helped him, uh, but he didn't say anything at this point. So I don't know what that all means. But anyhow, we see that the monsters are now gonna head back to the stadium. They said that's where it all started, which I'm not sure why he would say that. But anyways, oh no, that's because that's where, no, 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 they tried to wipe out the stadium. Anyway, they said that's where they're gonna go. But my guess is it's because, it's because they know that there's a number of humans there. So I think they wanna continue their experiment there and basically have all these test subjects at their disposal instead of just the one, two people that come staggering in every so often. So yeah, so much for the stadium, right? <laughs> this is not gonna be good because there's only a handful of survivors left. Most of them can't fight. Although there's already a couple of monsters on site. So that's them. And then at the stadium, we saw that the lady, the caretaker, she basically broke out her daughter and she was gonna help her escape. But then we see that the daughter's like, again, again, it's not her biological daughter, which makes sense because I was looking like, this woman does not look like she's old enough to be this woman's, <laughs> this girl's mother. But I know with Koreans, they don't be aging like, like the rest of us. So maybe it was possible. But anyhow, we found out that that's not her bio mom, that her bio mom actually monsterized and passed and that they just kind of developed this relationship. But this woman basically said, look, I don't really care about you like that. Like I, I do care to you, about you to a degree, but I'm about my son. I thought it was her husband, but it's her son. So her husband must be dead then, I'm assuming. I guess he really is gone. But her son must have monsterized as well, which we've never heard her mention a son before. So I'm surprised, but that explains the photo. I didn't understand the photo she was looking at last season, but now we know what she was looking at. But yes, it's her son that she's been feeding people to for God knows how long now. So we see that the other people who are in the base are suspicious because they realize that the one guy with the glasses has gone missing. And they said that they think that maybe he was monsterizing, but they don't know because where did he disappear to? And we also see that the sergeant is having the the lady followed, right? She know he knows that the lady who's running everything that she is up to something. So they did burst in and find her office, but they didn't realize she had her underground lair until, of course, her daughter screamed um, after knocking her out. Thank God she did. But the reason she even got the opportunity to knock her out is because after she said those very hurtful things to this poor girl, she went and tried to feed her to her son. She's like, you know, my son is the only person I care about, blah, 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 and brings her in to feed her there, but then looks and she's like, meet my son. But then she looks up and we see what looks like a spider type thing, but her face, she's like, where my son, my son. And I first I thought, what, did he change? But now it hits me that she sent glasses down there. And as I said, she has no guarantee that her that glasses wasn't gonna evolve into something crazy, right? Cause he was in the middle of his monsterization. So I'm thinking that Mr. Glasses turned into something that was bigger and badder than her son and he then ate him up. And so she did not anticipate that happening. So she looked like she was about, you know, she was screaming about her son and that's when Sis got the opportunity to knock her ass out. And then of course she screamed. So the soldiers are gonna find out about that hidden basement at long last and probably figure out what's been happening to all these missing people over all this time. So anyway, that's some craziness going on at the stadium. But again, depending on what glass is turned into, they might have a bigger problem. Like, can they keep them contained in there? If they go rushing in, you know, what's that even gonna mean? But that could be a helpful weapon for them since we know the other monster humans are on their way. So that's kind of the state of the union right now. We have no idea where the, oh no. We just saw Lee Kyung's daughter just walking. We don't know where she is right now, but she's still out there somewhere. But as I said, I, I have a sneaking suspicion she might be headed towards the stadium as well. 
I just feel like all things are going to converge there this season. And like I said, as she meets up with the other monster humans, that's going to sound like a dream come true for her right now as she's on her anti-human kick. So it's going to be a fight for her soul now that we see that Lee Kyung is alive and possibly back to normal. So yeah, like I said, a good way to start things off. We've definitely set a few plot points in motion. Still no sign of what's her name's brother though. So I know he's coming at some point, but I'm pretty sure the room where his, the chrysalis is, it looked like it was still intact. So I don't know if what we saw the last at the end of last season is what's gonna happen, it still hasn't happened, or if it was in another room, I don't know, or they just didn't notice that it's not the same. But yeah, we haven't seen him yet. So I'm very anxious to see what he's like now that he's come out of the cocoon. What does he remember? What's his mindset? So many questions. So yeah, I think it was a good start, guys. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love and I will see you in the next episode.